Welcome into iHeart STEM. Today, I want to talk to you about the nuances of food packaging. I had no idea that food packaging is so specialized. There are degrees dedicated just to this major. It includes biology, chemistry, physics, engineering, health, and more. I talked to an engineer and a project manager at a major consumer packaged goods company to get the four minutes food. You're watching iHeart STEM. Today, we'll tackle one STEM topic I learned from experts. Just four key questions with each answer under one minute or less. Packaging is so important because it's going to impact things like resistance to temperature, shelf life, cost, weight, appearance, and so much more. They're actually called food contact substances and are regulated by an organization within the FDA called the Center for Food Safety and Applied Nutrition. Now, first and foremost, a supplier has to be vetted to make sure its processes and its facilities are up to par. Then each material needs to have a certified declaration for being safe and being made under hygienic practices which includes reporting on toxicology, chemical, and environmental levels. Some materials also have to go through specialized testing for outgassing or transference of flavor. Besides all of these safety considerations, there's a host of quality considerations, like how quickly will something become stale? Will it get smashed? What are the warehousing requirements? And then last but certainly not least is appearance. That's what's gonna make you and I buy the specific food. So you need to consider things like where can it be placed in the store based on how big it is? Or does it require something specialized like a spoon for a consumer to eat? Yeehaw! A couple examples of foods that are limited and how you can package them. Foods with omega-3 fats become rancid when they're exposed to oxygen, heat, or light, which makes your food smell, taste bad, or even lose its nutritional value. So to account for this, they use packaging that's considered to be active or called modified atmosphere packaging, which limits the exposure of the food to those factors. Similarly, preservative-free baked goods when exposed to oxygen can grow bacteria. So they've studied this extensively, and for these, they use something called stimuli-responsive antimicrobial materials in the packaging. I know, it's a mouthful. Dried fruits, obvious because of the sweetness, they attract bugs, and they're also supposed to be dried, so they're susceptible to moisture. But what was interesting to me is because they often contain sulfur dioxide, they can't be used in materials that are going to have reaction like metal. And then other factors that aren't specific to a type of food are where is the food going? Is it going on an airplane? Is it going in the mountains? And they actually run tests to make sure that there's no food packaging failures on the other side. Needs and design determine how easy or hard it is for us to open up a specific food. Certain designs contain additional layers of film, which add protection and longevity to a product, but that additional thickness can make it harder for you and I to open up a package. Tear notches, perforation marks, score lines, tear away strips, those make it easier to open up a specific food, but they're not always included. Maybe there's not enough room on the package itself. Cost is obviously always a big factor, and things like flour and sugar, they want to keep the packaging costs down. So even though it doesn't always make sense to us as a consumer, because I always spill flour when I get home, it ultimately mostly does its job. Things like lids are vacuum sealed to preserve the food. And so what's interesting is even though they seem impossible to open, they're doing their job. Now, depending on how the food was filled in the jar, whether through a hot or a cold method, that's gonna determine how easy or how hard it is to open up that specific jar. Sustainability is one that's playing a bigger role because as we all become more environmentally conscious, we don't want food packaging that's gonna damage the environment. So manufacturers are having to consider, will something biodegrade? How quickly will it biodegrade? And is it recyclable before they put those materials into a package? The removal of non-healthy materials is another really big focus because as our life expectancy is around 79 years in the United States and our food habits have changed, they've realized that some of the materials in food packaging are playing a much bigger detrimental role in our overall health, two in particular. BPA is one that's been used since the 1960s and most manufacturers have committed to BPA free at this point. Another is PFAs, which are used in things like wrappers at McDonald's and even kava. As recently as in February, the FDA ruled that these can no longer be used for grief proofing. The last area is engagement with customers wanting to engage more with products. These have now become a marketing tool and you need to be able to have room for things like QR codes. Listen, no judgment if you're like me and you just went and grabbed some food packages just to test out your new learnings. I'll see you next week.